Well, then we'll start with Jai Radha Madhava. Jaya Radha Madhava Kundabihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunda Bihari Hari Jaya Gopi Janava Daba Girivara Dari Jaya Kupi Jana Vallabha Girivara Dari Yashoda Nandana Brajajana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Brajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tiravana Chari Yamuna Tiravana Chari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunda Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunda Bihari Jaya Gopi Jana Vallabha Girivara Dari Jaya Gopi Jana Vallabha Girivara Dari Yasoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yasoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Tiravana Chari Yamuna Tiravana Chari Indaya Radha Madhava Kundabiyari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 
Hare Hare Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Ki Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Shri Shri Radha Madhava Ki Jai, Shri the Prabhupada Ki Jai, Gora Pramundi. Okay, Hare Krishna, everyone. First, I'd just take a, take a moment to pray to Radha Kalashanji that Rupa Nuga Prabhu is okay. Um, it's very unlike, I, I, maybe I missed a message or something, but I'm just hoping that he's okay because I haven't heard anything from this morning. Rupa Nuga Prabhu, if you're hearing this, please text me. Just make sure you're okay. And if I made a mistake, I apologize. So we're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam. Third Canto, Chapter 2, I believe it's verses 15 through 24. Let me check. Thank you, Prabhu. Chapter 2, Canto 3. Chapter 2, I believe it's verses 15 through 24, but let me double check. <laughs> Excuse me. It's a... Uh... Oh, I'm scheduled today. <laughs> and Rupa Nuga scheduled tomorrow. I forgot that he asked me. Rupa Nuga, Prabhu, my bad. <laughs> Woo! Okay, I'm glad I did the reading this morning then. Okay. The theme for today is the inconceivable mercy of Krishna and his devotees. And uh, 15 through 24, that's right. And then text 23 we'll be focusing on. Um, can we turn to 23? Oh, let's do. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Narayanam Namaskritya. Naram Jaiva Narotamam. Devim Sarsvatim Visyam. 
Tato Jayam Yudirayat. Before, together please, before reciting this Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances unto the person of Godhead, Narayana, unto Narayan, Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Sarswati, the goddess of learning, and uh, Srila Vyasadeva, the author. Nasta Preyashabreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttamasloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naistaki Translation together, please. By regular attendance in class on the Bhagavatam and by rendering of service to the pure devotee, all that is troublesome in the heart is almost completely destroyed and the loving service unto the personality of Godhead who is praised with transcendental songs is established as an irrevocable fact. Om Gan Timarandasya Gananjana Salakaya Shakshuran Lityam Yena Tazmai Shi Guru Ve Nama I was born in the darkness of ignorance and my spiritual master opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my respectful obeisances unto him. Sorry, give me one second here. Want to find it? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Hare Ram, Hare Ram. We'll go to text 23, please. We go to the uh, Sanskrit. Okay. Thank you. Aho bakiyam stana kalakutam. Aho bakiyam stana kalakutam. Jigham saya payayad api asya dvi. Jigham saya payayad api asya dvi. Labhe gatam datri uchitam tato nayam. La begatim duhatri uchitam tatuniam. Tatri uchitam tatunaya. Kamva dayalam saranam rajayume. Kamva dayalam saranam rajayama. Aho bakiyam sanakala kutam. Jigham saya apayayad apia sadvi. Labhe gatyam datri uchitam tato nayam. Kamva dayalam saranam rajahema. Chant, please.
Patunayam Mukamba de Elam Sarinam Rajema Nobakiyam Stanaka Lalitam Do the synonyms, to, synonyms together, please. Mm. Aho, alas, baki, the she demon, putana, yam, um, stana, of her breast, kala, deadly, kutam, poison, jigamasyaya, out of envy, apyayat, nourished, api, although, asadvi, unfaithful, labhi, achieved, gatim, destination, datri uchitam, just suitable for the nurse, tataha, beyond whom, anyam, other, come, who, else, va, certainly, dalyam, mercifully, saranam, shelter, vrajanam, shall I take. Translation. I appreciate your enthusiasm, Esther. Alas, Hello. Please repeat. Alas, how shall I take shelter of one more merciful than he who is granted the position? of mother to the she-demon Putna. Oh. Although she was unfaithful oh. and she's uh, prepared deadly poison to be sucked from her breast. Purport. Here is an example. Oh. Here is an example of the extreme mercy of the Lord. Even to his enemy, it is said that a noble man accepts the good qualities of a person from, of doubtful character, just as one accepts nectar from a stock of poison. In his babyhood, he was administered deadly poison by, Putna, by Putana, a she-demon who tried to kill the wonderful baby. And because she was a demon, it was impossible for her to know that the Supreme Lord, even though playing the part of a baby, was no one less than the same Supreme Personality of Godhead. His value as the Supreme Lord did not diminish upon his becoming a baby to please his devotee Yashoda. The Lord may assume the form of a baby or a shape other than that of a human being, but it doesn't make the slightest difference. He is always the same Supreme. A living creature, however, uh, however powerful he may become, by dint of severe penance, never become equal to the Supreme Lord. Lord Krishna accepted the motherhood of Putna because she pretended to be an affectionate mother, allowing Krishna to suck the rest. The Lord accepts the least qualification of the living entity and awards him the highest reward. That is the standard of his character. Therefore, who but the Lord can be ultimate shelter? Alas, who... How shall I take shelter of more merciful than he who granted the position of mother to the she demon, demon Putna, although she was unfaithful and she prepared deadly poison to be sucked from her breasts? The story of Putna is Kamsa, who is the great enemy of Krishna. He, knowing that Krishna was going to kill him, was thinking of so many means of how to kill Krishna before he could kill him. So he, uh, he had many demon friends like Putna, Agasura, Bakasura. Anybody else name any of the demons of Kamsa, friends of Kamsa? Church of Varna. Who? Trinavarta? 
Trinavarta and Shakatasura. Dana Kasura. One more time. Biramasura. So, so many demons uh, Kamsa sent to kill Krishna. And Kamsa and their demons were constantly thinking about Krishna. They were meditating on, on him constantly. But they weren't meditating on Krishna in a way of devotional service, meaning that their meditation or their consciousness, Krishna consciousness, wasn't based on favorable service to the Supreme Person. It was unfavorable. However, Krishna is so kind that if anybody meditates on him, meditates upon him, he gives them liberation. So when um, Putna offered to mother Krishna, well, let's first actually go back here. So when uh, Putna came to the village of Vrindavan, she was a witch. So how did this witch get to the position of being able to nurse Krishna? Yes, she was very beautiful. So beautiful that everybody just accepted that she must be, <laughs> must be something auspicious. And we can, we can uh, understand that. And nowadays, so many people will dress nicely or come and say so many kind words, but we don't know what's behind them, right? So it takes some time to get to know them and understand their intentions. So Puna comes and everybody, all of the women are just so flattered by her beauty that they let her come to Krishna to um, nurse him. And when uh, nursing, she puts poison on her breast and Krishna goes to nurse and he starts to nurse Putna. And Krishna is so wonderful that he was seeing Putna as his mother. However, he also could understand that she was trying to kill him. So he sucked the life air out of her breath. Uh, bre uh, sucked the life air out of her. And once he did this, she became uh, turned into her witch form. And it is said that she was, was it eight miles long? Putna's gigantic witch body? It was really, really big. It looked like hills and mountains. And uh, so when Krishna gets any type of service, Sri the Prabhupada says in the end of the purport, is he takes the, the smallest service, and gives the biggest benefit. Similarly, on the battlefield of Kukchetra, the all of the soldiers who saw Krishna's face couldn't help but adore Krishna. And with that admiration of Krishna, when they died, they were actually transferred to the Vaikuntha planets. The Vaikuntha planets are the planets, spiritual planets, the spiritual world, but they're in a way where um, Krishna is showing his form as Narayan. So the, the, the mood in the Vaikuntha planets is of awe and reverence of Krishna. So these soldiers, when they saw Krishna, they had this appreciation for Krishna. And although they weren't devotees, their appreciation was enough to bring them to the Vaikuntha planets where they could appreciate Krishna in his on reverence as Narayan. However, the demons, they got a different kind of liberation. Does anybody know what kind of liberation the, um, uh, the demons received? Yeah, they merged. So Shish Shishupal was um, an enemy of Krishna. And um, Krishna, Shishupal liked to tease Krishna and to speak badly of Krishna. And Krishna was very tolerant. 
But he made a vow that once Shishupal badmouthed him so many times, then he would kill Shishupal. Does anybody remember how many times it was? I'm forgetting how many times it was. 100? 100. So he's tall enough to take 100 times Shishupal badmouthing him, and then he would finish Shishupal off. So in the, the Yagya, it starts with an S. Sh, um, Rajasua. Yes, yes. Because Yudhisthira was being um, uh, put as king, right? Put in place as king. So the Rajasua, it doesn't, and that doesn't start with an S. My bad. <laughs> the Rajasua sacrifice, Shishupal. They were asking who's at, at the, the, the sacrifice they, they needed to... Uh, commence the person who is most worthy of worship. And so many people said Krishna, and a couple people didn't like this, and Shishupal was one of them. And so Shishupal spoke up and said, hey, we can't let this, this Krishna be the, 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 you know, the head person being appreciated in this ceremony. And he started to speak badly of Krishna. Um, can anybody remember, I'm forgetting at this moment, what Shishupal was saying about Krishna. Um, does anybody remember any of the, the things that Shishupal was saying, Drista? Mm, he's speaking badly about their wives? Hmm. Characterless, that's right. Didn't he, didn't he say something about him running away? Or is that Jera? What's that? Too many things. He said too many. Not, not all at that time, but the hundredth time came at there. And so what Krishna did when Sishupal came to his hundredth time speaking badly of Krishna, he took out his Sudarshan uh, chakra, the chakra that Krishna, his weapon, and boop, he took off Shishupal's head. And what happened when Shishupal got his head taken off and laid dead? He merged. People could actually see the spark merge into Krishna. So the yogis who are the jnanis and yogi, the yogis who are so interested in um, meditation and understanding Krishna and merging into the Brahma Jyoti, because of Krishna's mercy, the people who even were enemies of Krishna, who folk were Krishna, uh, uh, were were thinking of Krishna also, they got the same liberation as those yogis who spent millions, hundreds of thousands, whatever the amount of time is, focusing on Krishna. So just to take a minute, moment to really you know comprehend that yogis are doing so many things, or sit, you know, focusing on the tip of the nose, fixing their breath, taking breaths only so many, not, not drinking any water, drinking food, so many different things these yogis are doing to get liberation or to merge into the Brahma Jyoti, Krishna's effulgent. But just by seeing Krishna and meditating on him in that way of, of, of disdain, the people that fought Krishna got the same liberation. So this is the mercy of, 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 of Krishna that any Krishna consciousness, Krishna will take and give benefit to the person. Any questions or thoughts on that? Any comments? You grab a no need to apologize. Just a uh, related point. Uh, there are bona fide, genuine yogis who follow this step. You know, mm. Atyara, um, what is that? What is that? It starts with the do's and don'ts. And then finally, it leads to the uh, samadhi where the yogi is fixed, mm. advanced. So basically, if they're genuine and bona fide, they're. 
So they are meditating on the beautiful form of the Lord, his mm. four-ended form, like Dhruva Maharaj did. So pseudo yogis, yes, they may be meditating on the effulgence, bodily effulgence of the Lord. Mm. But the bona fide genuine yogis, they meditate on the uh, beautiful forearm form of the Lord. Mm. So if we're meditating on Krishna in a in a in a positive way, then of course that's a devotee. However, the person who's not meditating on Krishna in a way that's beneficial to Krishna is is not a devotee. And that's the point of the demons, is that they weren't devotees, they were actually meditating on Krishna in a in the wrong way. But the yogi who's meditating on Krishna in whatever form obtains the spiritual worlds. Let's let's go to text fifteen please. Can we read the translation here? We'll go fifteen to twenty four basically. The personality of Godhead, the all compassionate controller of both the spiritual and material creations, is unborn. But when there is friction between his peaceful devotees and persons who are in the material modes of nature, he takes birth, birth just like fire, accompanied, accompanied by Mahat Tatwa. So, Krishna, so we've spoke about this quite a few times, right? The reasons for his appearance are to annihilate the miscreants and to give, to, to, uh, to, to what? I can't hear you, I'm sorry. Yes, and to give pleasure to the devotees, right? So to annihilate the miscreants, to reestablish religion, and to give pleasure to the devotees. Okay, let's go to the next one, 16, please. When I think of Lord Krishna, how he was born in the prison house of Vasudev, although he is unborn, how he went away from his father's protection to Vraja and lived there incognito out of fear of the enemy, and how, although unlimitedly powerful, he fled from Mathura in fear, all these bewildering incidents give me distress. So Krishna plays like an actor, right? So um, you guys may have had experiences when you were children that you play with your parents or your father, um, or you've seen this before, maybe. And so the father, he might, uh, playing with the child, might act in so many different ways. He might uh, let the small child, three years old, come and tackle him, right? And he tackle, you fall down, dad falls on the ground and says, oh, you got me, you know? And the child is so happy because they tackled the father, you know? And what, what happens to the father when this happens? He becomes even more happy because the child is happy. So, so many different situations like this where you can see that the pleasure of somebody who has more um, uh, facility to, of understanding will, because of their love, give the person with less facility um, uh, power over them in some way, shape, or form or submit to their happiness over their, um, over their own. So the reason why I bring this up is because Krishna is, when he's transferred from Vasudev to, uh, to Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda, he's showing fear. He's showing that he's scared. He's saying, I must get away from Kamsa. He's going to kill me and this. But why? Why is Krishna doing this? Is he scared? Why is he doing it? for the pastime, which gives pleasure to the devotees because they see Krishna in this way. Oh, Krishna's sc fear, scared, I must help him. I must save him. So the father might act like they're scared of a ghost or a goblin underneath the, 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 the bed. And they're like, oh, will you help me? Will you help me look under the bed and see if there's anything? And the child goes, oh, dad, I'll do it. You know, I'll look under the bed for you. <laughs> and so they, 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 they um, yeah. 
So they're doing these activities in a way to, to have that rasa or that, that pastime. So, um, for instance, when Vasudev is going to Vraj, he, he drops Krishna in the, the, the river, right? And thinking that he's just lost his, his poor Krishna and dropped him in the water, and, uh, Vasudev is, is beside himself. However, Krishna, being the supreme person, never gets lost. He never is afraid of water. He's never going to be rushed down the water and disappear. So, okay, let's go to 17, please. Lord Krishna begged pardon from his parents for their Krishna and Balaram's inability to serve their feet. Due to being away from home because of, the, because of great fear of Kamsa, said, Father, please excuse us for this inability. All this behavior of the Lord pain at heart. Mm. So Krishna, after seeing Vasudeva and uh, Devaki, comes and says, hey, I'm sorry, you know, we're sorry we had to leave. We were, in a, you know, incapable of, of, and so we had to leave. It's okay. Next one, 18. Who, after smelling the dust of his lotus feet, even once could ever forget it? Simply by expanding the leaves of his eyebrows, Krishna has given the death blow to those who were burdening the earth. So The Rock, you guys ever watch WWE? <laughs> the Rock has the people's eyebrow. You see this? Anybody, yeah. anybody watch WWE and know The Rock when he's fighting, right? And he gives the eyebrow. Krishna did this way before The Rock. <laughs> he was doing it, he was doing it 5,000 years ago. He just, but, but Krishna is so amazing. When he gives the people's eyebrow, it literally kills people. <laughs> throws them down. So who's Rock compared to Sri Krishna? Jai, 19. Anybody, please? You have personally seen how the king of Sadi, or Shady, oh, Sisupula, Shishupal. Oh, Shishupala, Shishupal, achieved success in yoga practice, although he hated Lord Krishna. Even the actual yogis aspire after such success with great interest by performance of their various practices. Who can tolerate separation from him? We spoke about this earlier. Shishupal had the same... Uh, benediction, the same uh, as the yogis who meditate on the Brahma Jyoti. Next one, please. Lord Chi Krishna is, wait, okay, um, certainly others who were fighters on the battlefield of Guru Chaitra were purified by the onslaught of Arjuna's arrows, and while seeing the lotus-like face of Krishna, so pleasing to the eyes, they achieved the abode of the Lord. I spoke about this earlier. The, the, the soldiers in the battlefield, they, adoring Krishna because of his looks, got a different kind of liberation than the enemy of, of Krishna. But one thing interesting in this, this, uh, trans, uh, this uh, sloka is it says that the, um, they were purified by the onslaught of Arjuna's arrows. So Arjuna, being a pure devotee of the Lord, he is acting in a way to please Krishna. And therefore, his activities are completely pure. So the mercy of the devotee who's completely thinking of their service to Krishna, anybody who comes in contact with that service is also purified. So when you're on book distribution and you're focusing on how I'm going to distribute these books for Krishna's pleasure, anybody who comes in contact with you is making progress. It's unbelievable, right? They don't, they don't even have to take the book and they get some progress. But the, but the important part is, is that we remain in the attitude that we're doing this service for Krishna, right? If we're distributing books and we're thinking, oh, how I will sell so many books, Oh, how I will be famous. Everybody will hear my glories of, of, of book distribution. Then that's not so, so Krishna conscious, right? But one who's thinking about how they can please Sri the Prabhupada, how they can please Krishna in their service, that, that, that service is pure. And therefore, anybody who comes in contact of our arrows, of book arrows, our arrows of books, gets purification. So you guys are warriors. 
shooting Srimad Bhagavad Gita's. <laughs> yes, this is a great point, Esther. That anybody who is hearing Har uh, the this, the Hari Nam Sankirtan, when they pass by, they get um, benefit, right? Not only the persons, any living entity in the area that hears the Hari Nam is getting purified. The trees, the grass, the ants, so many ants out there, right? The wasps. <laughs> okay, 21, please. Lord Sri Krishna is the Lord of all kinds of trees and is immediately supreme by achievement of all kinds of fortune. He is worshipped by the natural maintainers of the creation who offer him the paraphernalia of worship by touching the millions of helmets to his feet. 22, please. Therefore, O Vidura, does it not pain us, his servitors, when we remember that he, Lord Krishna, used to stand before King Ugrasena, who was sitting on the royal throne, and used to submit explanations before him, saying, O my Lord, please let it be known to you. 23 and 24, please. Alas, how shall I take shelter of one more merciful than he who granted the position of mother to a she-demon, Putana? Although she was unfaithful and she prepared deadly poison to be sucked from her breast. I consider the demons who are inimical towards the Lord to be more than the devotees because while fighting with the Lord, absorbed in thoughts of enmity, they are able to see the Lord carried on the shoulders of Garuda, the son of Tarkaya, Tarkisha, uh, Kaspiapa, and carrying the wheel weapon in his hand. So we mentioned that the theme of today was how merciful Krishna is and his devotees. The unconceivable mercy of Krishna. Can I get, can somebody explain one thing we heard today about Krishna's inconceivable mercy? Esther, go ahead. The 100, the 100 chance. Say that again? I'm sorry. The one. 100 chances he gave Putana. The 100, you know, he was so tolerant of, of a person. That's, right? Inconceivable. Go ahead. Uh, the demons being allowed to merge into the Brahmajas. Yeah, the, the demons even getting the same benediction as yogis who are interested in. Anybody else? Jai Hari. Go ahead and I'll repeat it. Right? Krishna takes the smallest thing that we do and gives the best benefit. Whew, it's, it's amazing. Uh, one thing that came to my mind is, um, like here in the material world, we can't directly see Krishna, but he's allowing these souls to directly see him and get his association in one way or another. So that's like... like Really awesome. Yeah, you're, this is in the last that last four. How un unbelievable is it that the 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 soldiers on on the battlefield are seeing Krishna with his chakra or seeing Krishna? Yeah, it's it's amazing. We're we, you know, devotees are begging to see Krishna, and he's so merciful that he's even giving all of these demons the opportunity and giving him such a benefit. Esther, go ahead. I don't know if this counts, but you said that he saw Putana as his mother still, even right. when he knew that he was trying to poison him. Yeah, it kind of goes with the, he'll take the small, the, even the smallest act of devotion or the smallest thing and give the most benefit. So Putana, just showing the act of a mother, he took it and said, okay, you're my mother. And so therefore, I'll, I'll take care of you. Um, somebody please correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't know. Didn't Putana... Isn't she the exception to like the other demons? She didn't just get liberation. She went like back to Godhead. She went to Goloka Vrindavan because because he accepted her as a mother because yeah. she like offered um, like she offered a service to him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, um, doesn't she get the opportunity to become mother in her next life? I d I don't remember, but I think she gets like the position in like the spiritual world as like a nurse or yeah. something like that. 
because of the service. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? Yeah, one of the nursemaids. Thank you. And yeah, it's quite amazing. Go ahead, Esther. I don't remember if anyone said this already, but you said like accepting people who are more than who are like supposedly less than yogis because they did less like s extreme services accepting them still along with the yogis wow does that count yeah okay any questions we've got uh, questions okay extending what jayari prabhu said and uh, you said also um, always sees whatever little bit is done, smallest thing in a devotee and what's the greatest. So Putana, in her past life, she was the daughter of Bali Maharaj called Ratnamala. And when uh, Krishna assumed the form of the dwarf Brahmana Vamana Dev, uh, seeing that beautiful form, she, uh, her motherly affection aroused in the heart and uh, she started thinking of, you know, uh, taking Krishna, Vaman Dev, in her lap and breastfeeding her. So that's how Krishna fulfilled her desire to be mother in her next life. Uh, next life. But when she saw how Vaman Dev tricked Bali Maharaj and uh, took away everything from him, so she became very angry and she, she thought of killing Krishna in her mind. So that's how she assumed the form of a demon as in next life. Any questions? Thoughts? Final comments? No? No questions? Well, I'm sorry my energy is kind of low today, but I was really appreciating throughout the class how many people answered back what was the, you know, the theme. And so I thank you all for giving uh, your attention to what is being spoken in Srimad Bhagavatam, and I appreciate that reciprocation. Thank you so much. Shri Ma Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Shri the Prabhupada Ki Jai. Gora Pramende Hari Hari Bo.